Good morning. Welcome to St. Nicholas Parish Community. Today we celebrate the 15th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Please stand and turn your attention to the back of the church. My dear sisters and brothers, on this, the Lord's Day, as we recognize the Lord in the breaking of the bread, we will also welcome the Lord's presence among us and in, into the heart and life of this little girl who will be baptized. And so I ask you, Aaron and Peter, what name do you wish to give your daughter? And why have you brought Nora Ophelia here today? My dear sister and brother, you have brought your daughter here to be baptized. In doing that, you will accept the privilege and the vocation and the responsibility of her, of raising her in our Christian faith. And you will do that by your word and example. Do the two of you clearly understand what you're beginning here today? Yes. And Talia and Martin, are you ready and willing to help Peter and Aaron in their role as Christian parents by serving as Nora's godmother and godfather? Nora, Ophelia, the Christian community welcomes you with great joy, and on their behalf, I claim you now for Jesus our Savior by the sign of the cross. And I invite mom and dad and godparents to sign Nora's head with the cross as well. Please join in singing our gathering song number 301, The God of All Grace, 301. The God of all grace has blessed us this day. All of creation joins us in praise, lifting our voices, lifting our hearts to the glory of God forever. God of power and might, come into your presence this day. Strengthen us now with the spirit of us this day. All of creation joins us in praise, lifting our voices, lifting our hearts to the glory of God forever. God of mercy and truth, who brings us from night into day, nourish our with the spirit of hope and shield us from all fear. The God of all grace has blessed us this day. All of creation joins us in praise, lifting our voices, lifting our hearts to the glory of God forever. Let us pray. O oh God, you who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path, give all who for the faith they profess are accounted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary 
to the name of Christ and to strive always after everything that does that name honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, if only you would heed the voice of the Lord your God and keep his commandments and statutes that are written in this book of the law, when you return to the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul. For this command that I enjoin on you today is not mysterious and remote for you, it is not up in the sky that you should say, who will go up in the sky to get it for us and tell us of it that we may carry it out? Nor is it across the sea that you should say, who will cross the sea to get it for us and tell us of it that we may carry it out? No, it is something very near to you, already in your mouths and in your hearts. You have only to carry it out. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Christ Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him were created all things in heaven and on earth, the visible and the invisible. Whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he himself might be preeminent. For him, all the fullness was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile of all things for him, making peace of the blood of his cross through him whether those on earth or those in heaven. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. In reply, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, with all your strength, with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. He replied to him, you have answered correctly. Do this and you will live. But because he wished to justify himself, he said to Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man fell victim to robbers as he went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. They stripped and beat him and went off, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down that road, but when he saw him, he passed by on the opposite side. Likewise, a Levite came to the place, and when he saw him, he passed by on the opposite side. But a Samaritan traveler who came upon him was moved with compassion at the sight. He approached the victim, poured oil and wine over his wounds, and bandaged them. Then he lifted him up on his own animal, took him to an inn, and cared for him. The next day he took out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper with the instruction, take care of him. If you spend more than what I have given you, I shall repay you on my way back. Which of these three, in your opinion, was neighbor to the robber's victim? He answered, the one who treated him with mercy. Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. The gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, folks. We're glad to have 
Aaron and Peter, who have brought their Nora here to be baptized. And Peter and Aaron live in Belgium. And they have come here for this very special occasion. And family and friends have gathered here to celebrate this very special occasion with them. And you might wonder, Belgium, St. Nicholas, what's the connection? Well, Nora's great-grandmother, Sandra Bellis, whom we entrusted to the Lord God not too long ago, that great-grandma Sandra was baptized here at St. Nicholas. And so it's wonderful that we are able to, uh, having been built on the foundation like so many of us have been, how great it is that we're able to be here uh, in this very meaningful uh, place for the Bellis and now the de Kolk families as well. This happened a few, well, a few years, it happened about 40 years ago. Isn't it frightening when you can look back and say, well, about 40 years ago, well, I'm, I might not remember what I ate for breakfast, but I can tell you what happened 40 years ago. You know, you know that feeling? Mm -hmm. But it's weird, I don't remember the person's name, and I don't even remember why we were involved in this conversation. But what I do remember as we were talking about whatever it was, the other person kept interrupting me and they kept saying, um, but I don't know what to do. And, you know, uh, being a 29-year-old priest with a lot of experience under my belt, you know, well, I would try to draw a little bit more out and the person kept, but I, Father, I don't know what to do. And this kept going on and on and I could, feel myself becoming kind of, I guess the word would be exasperated, and the person said, Father, I don't know what to do, and then using all the skills that I had learned in graduate school, I said, you know what to do, now just do it. Pastoral Counseling 101. The lawyer, the scholar of the law, asked Jesus, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Now we're told that the lawyer, the scholar, the, the scholar of the law, he asked this question to test Jesus, you know, who is this young whippersnapper from Nazareth uh, talking to us about God and all? You know, let's see if he knows what he's talking about. And of course, being a follower of law and order, as maybe some of you are, I've learned that a lawyer, now I may have this wrong, but a lawyer will never ask a question for which he does not already know the answer. Is that true? Mm -hmm. So he knew the answer to the question he was asking Jesus, but he wanted to see if Jesus was on the up and up. And sure enough, Jesus, the young rabbi from Nazareth, gives the answer. Love God and love your neighbor as you love yourself. However, though, the young lawyer, I think he got more than he was expecting because then Jesus draws him to the next step, as he so often does with us too. The lawyer agreed with the answer, love God and our neighbor, but now you have to do it. Now you have to not just talk about loving God and our neighbor and ourselves, but now he has to live the answer that he knows up here and that he has in here. It's not enough just to know the answer. He and we have to live the answer. And you know, from the time of Moses, that challenge is so clear and, and so direct. Did you hear what the Lord God said through our buddy Moses? God's command, we're told, is not too mysterious. It's not too remote. God's command is near to us. God's command is in our hearts. Hmm, doesn't get much closer than that. 
And then I don't think the Lord God is ever as clear as he is with these words. Now, you have, you have only to carry it out. That's all we have to do. We know the greatest commandment is to love God and love our neighbor as we love ourselves. Now the Lord God, the God of Moses, the Father of Jesus, the Father of us all, says, okay, now get to work. Now do the answer. And of course, the Lord Jesus, he tells that story with which we are all so familiar. The story of the Good Samaritan. And I think when we hear that story, our natural, our first inclination is that our neighbor is anybody in need. Whether it's the person on the street, or the person that we live with, the person that we work with, someone we know, or perhaps a complete stranger. But yet Jesus, he twists his answer around a little bit. And he puts the focus on us. If you notice, if you read it carefully and listen carefully, that each one of us is called to become a neighbor. That we're to be a neighbor to anybody in need. That we're called to cross the street, as it were. Not to keep walking like the priest, not to be averting our eyes like the Levite, but by following the example of that foreigner, the Samaritan, the one that everybody looked down on, Jesus said, that's the one that we're supposed to imitate. The outsider, the foreigner, the alien, that we're to become a neighbor to anybody we encounter. And there are so many people, aren't there my brothers and sisters, who have, in a way, fallen among robbers Maybe they are, have been attacked by maybe another person physically, or maybe they've been abused emotionally or spiritually. Maybe they've fallen prey to loneliness or anger or, well, you name it. There are so many people who are on the other side of the road, the other side of the street, and we are called to be the neighbor the neighbor who will take the chance. And there's no doubt about it. It's kind of risky when we reach out to people. It could be somebody that we know and love. Maybe there's someone who's struggling with what we can see as a problem. Maybe it's an unhealthy relationship. Maybe it's an addiction to drugs or to alcohol, or maybe even in an unhealthy relationship with another person and we can stand by on this side of the road and say oh isn't it terrible about Harry isn't it terrible about Mary but I don't want to get involved it might be the call that the Lord is offering to us to take the chance to cross the street to say do you need help or maybe even maybe butting in once in a while now not all the time but when we see something wrong do we have the courage to step in and say, you know what, friend, I think you might be in trouble. The friend might say, mind your own business. Well, that's the chance we take when we cross over to the other side. But isn't it worth the effort and worth the risk to reach out to somebody that obviously needs maybe a kick in the pants or a kind word of correction? We know the answer. Love God and love our neighbor. That's what the young lawyer knew. That's the answer we were given when Nora's grandmother was growing up. She learned the golden rule. She learned the greatest commandment to love God and our neighbor. And from wherever her spot in heaven, she's looking down now at this little girl and that with the help of her mom and dad, her godparents, her family, and this community as well. Nora's going to discover the most important thing that she's called to be about, but then also that next crucial step of not just knowing the right answer, but living that answer with her life. What must I do? My friend of 40 years ago, I don't know what to do. I don't, oh, well, I think she did, and I think we do too. 
What's the answer? The answer is love. And what are we supposed to do about it? We're supposed to, with our words and our actions and our lives, we're called and challenged to live out that answer that is always, that is always love. Nora, Ophelia, may you have strength in the power of Jesus, our Savior, who lives and reigns forever and ever. In a few moments, we will go up to the waters of baptism, and we will say the formula Something extraordinary will happen. This little girl will be reborn. She'll enter into the dying and the rising of the Lord Jesus. She'll be given the gift of faith. She'll be filled with the light of the risen Lord. But of course, sisters and brothers, we know that this is just the beginning. This is just the first step. If Nora is to discover the presence and action of the Lord God in her life. That will happen, of course, by the movement of God's grace in her heart and in her life. But the new life given to her today, it must be nourished by her mother and her father, her godmother and godfather, godparents, family, and really all of us, because she's being baptized and entering into our community, our family, God's holy people. And everybody is going to have, and anyone she encounters will have an effect on her life. Hopefully it will always be for that which is right and good and holy and just. And so as a sign that we are so glad to welcome Nora into our family, that we are willing to encourage her and affirm our faith, I ask all of you now who are Christians to renew the faith of your, the promises of your own baptism. In answering I do to each question, you will be professing your faith, the faith into which this little girl is about to be baptized. And so I ask all of you do you renounce Satan and all his works and all his empty promises? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus, his only Son, our Lord, born of the Virgin Mary, he who suffered death and was buried, who rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of our bodies, and life everlasting? This is our faith, the faith of the Church. We're proud to profess it through Christ our Lord. Aaron and Peter, is it your will that your daughter be baptized into the faith that we just professed with you? Can you hold Nora over the water a little bit? Nora, Ophelia, I baptize you in the name of the Father, 
and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> she had enough. <laughs> Nora, you've been baptized, and now we will anoint you with the oil of salvation. As Jesus was anointed priest, prophet, and king, so may you live always as a member of God's holy, royal, priestly family. Nora, you've been baptized. You have been clothed with Christ. And in this white garment, you have an outward sign of your new dignity as a Christian. With your family and friends to help and guide you, may you bring that dignity unstained into the everlasting life of heaven. Nora, you've been baptized and you have been filled with the light of Christ Jesus. But for a while, parents and godparents, the light is entrusted to you to be kept burning brightly. May you help to keep the flame of faith alive in Nora's heart. And when the Lord Jesus returns in glory, may you go out to meet him with all the angels and saints. Nora, Ophelia, you have been baptized. You have been filled with the light and the life of the risen Lord. You have been filled with the gift of faith. Hallelujah, hallelujah. My sisters and brothers, we welcome into our Christian family, our Catholic family, Nora, Ophelia, the Colt. Now, sisters and brothers, we pray for the needs of all God's people. That the leaders and followers in the church will bear witness to love of neighbor, as did the Good Samaritan, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That world leaders will work towards peace and assist the victims of war and strife. As the assault against Ukraine continues, may we boldly pray for God to intervene by the voice and power of the risen Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For judges, prosecutors, police officers, and all those who apply and enforce the law, may they do so with justice and fairness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That individuals and communities treat the earth gently and preserve its beauty and richness for future generations, we pray to the Lord. As we prepare for our upcoming Parish Bazaar next weekend, may our efforts be blessed with good weather and safety for all who volunteer and attend. Let us thank God ahead of time for the opportunity to share with our community, friends, and family, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Nora Ophelia, just baptized into our parish community, and for her family and friends, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, may their eternal rewards be great. We pray especially for the Wachek family, for whom this Mass is offered, and for Patty Zarniak and Jackie Perillo, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts. 
we pray to the Lord. Lord hear, hear the prayers of your family, O loving Father. We offer them to you as always, through Christ our Lord. Please join in singing number 466, The King of Love My Shepherd Is, 466. Friends, pray now that our sacrifice will be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Look upon the offerings of your church, O Lord, as we make our prayer to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring us ever greater holiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord. Holy Father, almighty, eternal God, through Christ our Lord. 
For by his birth, he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state. By his suffering, he canceled out our sins. Rising from the dead, he opened the road to eternal life. Ascending to you, dear Father, he unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end, together we acclaim. Holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of faith. We, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. And therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord God, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church scattered throughout the earth. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Joseph, our Bishop, all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with her beloved Joseph, with the Apostles, with St. Nicholas, with Blessed Pauline, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At 
our Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, be safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, For the kingdom and the power, power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus, you said to your apostle, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord's peace be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. When we say the word, my soul shall be healed. The communion song is number 353, One Love Released, 353.
stop this wine we drink, the blood of Christ outpoured. One bread, one body, one cup, one call. One faith, one spirit, present in us all. One prayer, one blessing, one hope, one peace. One church, one people, one love released. I am the bread of life, eat and you shall live. To those who share this meal, my strength I'll always give. One bread, one body, one cup, one call. One faith, one spirit, present in us all. One prayer, one blood, One peace, one church, one people, one love released. I am the living bread as manna from the sky. This bread I give to you that you may never die. faith, one spirit, present in us all. One prayer, one blessing, one hope, one peace, one church, one people, one love released. Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, O oh Lord, we pray that by our sharing in this sacred mystery, its saving effects upon us may continue to grow and flourish through Christ our Lord. Amen. Oh, a number of things in the bulletin, probably nine out of 10 things are all about the bazaar. So uh, we continue to, you know, we could use help in every quarter. Uh, we really are looking for young, strong men and women who will be runners, you know, running up and down. Run, remember those days when you could run up and down the steps? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some of you are still able to do that. Uh, we need runners. Um, a lot of different opportunities to take part. Uh, I hope you will you know, not just hear about it, but be willing to do it, okay? Um, Vacation Bible School, beginning of August, uh, applications and forms out here as well, okay? The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May God bless you, Father and Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Please join in singing our song of sending forth, number 390.
Celtic Alleluia, sending forth 390. steadfast in faith, joyful in hope of Christ's coming, and by unity let your love 